Welcome! This tutorial video will cover the random number variable feature in SteelBeast Mission Editor. This is a powerful tool that will enable you to create variety and allow the scenarios you create to have a high degree of replayability. Today I want to do a quick tutorial on how to use the random numbers variable feature to easily create randomization in various aspects of the missions you can create in the Mission Editor. We are currently in the process of creating a mission that pits two contemporaries from the 1960s against each other, the Israeli shot call tank and the Soviet T-64A. This was before the range-finding computers and tank sizing systems where visual methods were used to estimate range. Significantly, the T-64A has kill plates that can open up and change the perceived width of the tank. This is for a future scenario we will release to help reinforce visual methods of estimating range using the worm method. The concept of random variables is straightforward. There are 63 random variables that SteelBeast initializes every time a scenario is started and will not change during a mission. These are labeled x1 to x63 and they have a random numeric value. This numeric value will be a random number between 0 to 99, so there are 100 possible values. These values are independent, so the value of one variable, say x1, has no relationship to and will not affect another random variable. These values are also not mutually exclusive, and by that I mean that if x1 gets the value of 99, this does not preclude another random variable from having that same value. This is sometimes called sampling with replacement in statistics. The main concept to understand here is that any random variable has an equal chance of having a value between 1 to 99. One final variable we must mention is the new variable. This is a special variable that is recreated every time a condition is evaluated or tested. This variable will not appear in the mission debugger and it is the only random variable whose value changes during a mission. As you can see here, I have done some initial setup by creating an Israeli shot call tank for the user on the blue side, and a marking shared with all sides to allow us to reference where it is as we create plans for the red side. We will use this same setup for the rest of the tutorial today. The first simple use of random variables is to decide whether to spawn a unit. In this case, I am looking to provide some variation and variety in the target vehicles, so I am creating a solution where one of two tank platoons will appear. The unit to the west is head-on aspect to the blue team vehicle, while the unit to the east is in profile. I am going to create a situation where only one of the two platoons will appear, and there will be a 50% chance for each to appear. My first step will be to click and drag to select both units so that I can set a spawn if condition for both units. I will right click on the westernmost unit, go to options, select spawn if, and a conditional menu with Boolean logic appears. I then click on the radio button for the random variable settings and left click on the variable square once to select x1 as the variable I want to hinge the condition on. In this case, I want to set the condition to happen roughly one half of the time, so I will leave the lower limit at zero. I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I can iterate the upper limit by multiples of 20 and left click until I get to 60, and then right click twice to decrease this value down to 50, which is half of 100. I then hit OK. When I right click on the easternmost tank unit to repeat the process, you will notice that the same condition was also assigned to this unit that was assigned to the other one because we had selected both units at once. This saves us several steps and also makes it easier to keep track of what random variable, in this case x1, we were using before. I'm going to once again hold down shift to iterate by 20 for each left click and then right click twice to go down to 10 to set the lower limit at 50. I will use the same process to change the upper limit to 100. So by doing this, we are now setting a condition on the x1 variable to help decide which of these two T64 platoons will appear, and there will only be one. 
Either x1 is less than 50 and the western platoon will appear, or x1 will be greater than or equal to 50 and the eastern platoon will appear. Let's test the mission. If we go into the file menu and select the mission debugger, you can see the x1 variable is 36. So this means we should see only the westernmost tank platoon spawn for red. When we start the mission, this logic has proven correct, and now the user playing this scenario has a basic level of random variety. Next, we are going to make some changes to our previous setup to demonstrate how random number variables can determine where to spawn. So we first are going to move both platoons behind this hill south of blue team's position. What I am now going to demonstrate is the jump to end if condition, which is where you use the random number variable to determine which one of several waypoints the unit should jump to if and when it spawns. I'm going to go ahead and select just one platoon, the one on the west, and then create route orders to the waypoints where I want the platoon to spawn. It is mandatory that there be routes to these waypoints, regardless of what type of route, for Jump2 to work, otherwise you will not be able to access the Jump2 condition. In this case, I went ahead and used March for each, and made three different potential spawn locations to Jump2. To. I have decided I want to make each Jump to spawn location to have roughly 33% chance, or 35 out of 100 if I round to the nearest 5. To do this efficiently, I'm going to hold the shift key and left click on each of the routes so that I can edit them simultaneously. I am going to then right click on the group of routes and select jump to end if. This time, after I click on the radio button for random variable, I am going to right click the box and set the variable to iterate backwards, which will actually take me to x63 to demonstrate how to easily navigate to the other end of the random variable spectrum. I will leave the lower limit at zero, and once again use shift and left click to iterate to 40, and then right click to go backwards by five, leaving us at 35. After I hit OK, the same condition is set for all three routes. I can then individually fine tune each route to set the other two conditions on those routes to be between 35 and 70, and to be between 70 and 100. Now here is the time saving portion of this, which is that if you left click to select a route and then right click on the route, you should see a copy command. If you click that, it is now copied to your virtual clipboard. Next, left click on the easternmost tank platoon, right click it, and select paste. A copy of the previous route appears, now connected to the second tank platoon. If you repeat the process for the other two routes, you now have done twice the work in less than half the time. Let's test the results again. We go into the file menu, select mission debugger, and we see that x63 value is now 13, while x1 is 9. This means we should see the westernmost platoon spawn again, this time in the westernmost jump to if destination waypoint, which is what we set for x is greater than or equal to zero, less than 35. When we hit start, Again, everything is as expected. Now there are six different combinations of places a target platoon could appear for Blue to practice on. Finally, let's bring it all together and introduce another important way random number variables create powerful flexibility in missions, which is determining where to go using the embark if condition. In this case, I'm going to once again clean up the paths we had previously made, and this time create a slightly more complex plan. What I want to do for each red tank platoon is make two jump to if points that then branch off into three routes, each of which will be an embark if choice dependent on a random number variable. Finally, at the end of each of these paths, I will make another embark if condition linked to the new variable to give the unit the possibility of moving further past the second tier of waypoints. Once we are done, we will have 24 different destinations that our target tanks can potentially navigate to. So my first step is to make one route for the jump to condition, which then branches off into three different embark if routes, each of which has an additional embark if route connected to it. This time I will use X1 to control the Boolean logic in our now familiar window, 
setting the odds to 50% of the time by setting the lower limits to zero, the upper to 50. For each of the three embark if conditions, I'm once again going to left click while holding shift to edit them as a group, and then we'll right click, select options, embark if, and edit the conditions for the variable x2, this time between 0 and 35. I will edit each of these in turn to set them to be between 35 to 70 or 70 to 100. Finally, for the last embark if routes, I will again group edit these by shift right clicking and this time keep the variable in the random number dialog as new. I will set all of these routes to have a chance between 0 and 50 of moving on the next waypoint, and this condition will be evaluated at the time of the decision, so not ahead of time, and in theory this could happen multiple times with a different deciding value if I had more than one unit targeted at these waypoints. Now for the part that is powerful and time-saving, I'm going to right-click the first route nearest to the unit and select Copy Route Chain, which will copy the entire series of routes, including all of the work we did assigning conditions for the jump to and embark if for each route. I will then right click the same tank platoon, select paste, and the whole route chain is copied over. Before I do anything else, I need to do some cleanup and move the waypoints to new locations. I then need to remember to change the first path, the one we had set jump to, between zero to 50, to be between 50 to 100, so that one of the two conditions is picked if this unit spawns. Finally, I will copy both route chains over to the easternmost platoon. Let's test what we built. This time, when we look at the mission debugger, X1's value is 27, and X2's value is 74. This corresponds with the eastern tank platoon spawning, then jumping to the easternmost route, and then embarking on the westernmost path of that branch we won't know the value of the new variable until it comes to decision time. It looks like this time, the new variable was equal to or greater than 50, which was our upper limit, so the unit is going to stop right here. As you can see, using the random number variable effectively in combination with time-saving planning and keyboard shortcuts allowed us to create a ton of variety and allows us to create a situation that really will challenge the blue team player. Because of this, the replayability and usefulness of this mission was amplified in a way that should keep the mission interesting and serve its purpose as a training tool. We hope you found this video helpful. Please let us know in the user forum at steelbeast.com.